Hello and welcome to Snyder's Return, a tabletop roleplay podcast. My guest today has wandered across from a nearby solar system, bringing with them some, but not all of their memories to share. Perhaps brought here on a soft or gentle breeze, bringing with them a colourful view of the world we journey through. All the way from the land of the rising sun to bring us the opportunity to remember who we are, or even the chance to be someone new, is game designer, artist, Kickstarter and vagabond of Oracana Media, Federico Sons. Federico, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks for having me. <laughs> no, it's an absolute pleasure. Uh, Federico, how did you get into tabletop role-playing games, please? Okay. Um, well, since I'm from Argentina, uh, we don't really have much of a presence, in it, I guess, in comparison with like uh, the UK, uh, Europe, etc. Um, for RPGs, so I didn't really know about what RPGs were. Um, when I first came into contact with them, I found basically like a website in the internet about like this sort of like communal project to make a Warhammer city. And it was like a super weird uh, way to get into because I was reading all of this stuff and I didn't really get what this was for. I just thought it was something that was very cool. Um, and I, and then I realized, wait, there's there's a game attached to this city. <laughs> <laughs> so I downloaded the PDF uh, for that. And uh, yeah, I, I went with like a friend uh, and we just started trying to make sense of it. Um, mm. It didn't make much sense at the beginning, but eventually it, it turned into something that looked like a role-playing game session. Uh, oh, so, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so, from that unusual introduction, should we say, where did your TTRPG journey take you from there? Um, uh, well, funny enough, I didn't really do much TTRPG-wise after uh, that session for, like, five years. And it was only when I was like about 20 that I got back through like a, a co-worker uh, to RPGs and through like World of Darkness, uh, New World mm. of Darkness in particular. Um, and eventually at 23, I think it was, I moved to London uh, to basically do arts. Uh, and very quickly, I just got into like the scene in london and the uk uh taking part of like uh there's a london club called the rp haven uh i did member rep stuff there and i run like a lot of games and i was writing nibiru uh my first game uh during that time and eventually i um started working for modifius uh big okay. company uh sure most people know it <laughs> um mm-hmm. and i worked at modifius for about i think two to three years um first as a sort of like uh, assistant playtester developer and then as a line manager in uh, rpgs um so yeah and eventually i i founded oracana and went independent mm-hmm. wow 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 and uh so you you were creating uh nibiru there at that early stage how much uh We'll do a full uh, sort of introduction to that system, and then mm-hmm. and then um, Zephyr later. But um, has much changed in the development since you started working on Nibiru to where the game is now? Which you know, uh, again, we'll, we'll get to where it's available uh, in a moment. Uh, what change? What has changed um, within the game itself from first inception, should we say, to uh, published uh, TTRPG? Mm, so Nivru got published around 2020, I think. Um, and from its inception, I think mm, not much really changed regarding mechanics. The mechanics were very simple from the start. And uh, generally, I, I tend to start my games from the mechanics uh, mm. first. Uh, maybe the world building aspect like uh the the world change uh but th- there wasn't much in, in in terms of change um uh of course like we did play tests and stuff and and there's always stuff that gets tweaked uh but more or less the idea was was always quite like you know stable throughout time fair enough fair and mm-hmm. so if someone's interested um in, in your words, because you'll probably put it far better than I can, uh, what is Nibiru? 
So Nivru is a science fiction game of lost memories. Uh, it is basically set in this huge space station um, in which people live uh, seemingly unaware of what's outside of the space station, um, which makes it a very interesting setting because we have civilizations that develop without access to just really fundamental uh, concepts that make our worldview on Earth. Like, they don't know what the stars are. They don't know what the sun is, nor the moon, uh, uh, nor the sky. That, that's why one of the nicknames is the skyless world. Um, so thinking about that, thinking about how, like, people's, uh, you know, ideas about life and nature and, uh, and technology and, and all this stuff that is, you know, part of like science fiction and stuff uh, would have developed with all of that uh, was uh, very interesting. And it was essentially the, the stuff that I spent most of the time thinking throughout development. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, sort of a, a interesting structure to we say uh, mm -hmm. should we say that there's the uh, make sure I get these right the core which has the antumbras then the pen numbers then umbra and then something uh, beyond yeah. <laughs> um, the available now is uh, a quick start guide for those who are interested um, but the game uses you mentioned there um, before about memories it uses the uh, memos yeah I want to make sure mm -hmm. it's not a different uh, inference of the word memo system to try and sort of mm -hmm. help flesh out characters through play. It's such an, an interesting take on um, character creation or character mm -hmm. building, I, I guess. You yeah. sort of build the mm -hmm. character within the world rather than build a character for the world. It's... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, it's it's like, well, because it's about lost memories, essentially, in the space station, the players take on the role of vagabonds, which are people that woke up with no memories, um, and they start to recover these memories. And the way you do is essentially uh, you have a pool of points, which are memory points that represent the potential of your character to remember stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And whenever there's a role, so there's an action uh, that sort of like triggers that sort of like memory, you know, kind of like an eidetic or like that has to do with haptics or touching action uh, stuff. You can spend those and create a memory that you get to write. And it tends to give you a bonus uh, for the action that you're doing. So there's mm -hmm. like a connection between movement, action, and, and the act of, uh, of remembering something. Um, and that's how you start to build and, and sort of mold your character uh, as the game progresses. Yeah. yeah there's a lot of um, to, to and flow. A lot of flow between the narrator and uh, the, the, the vagabonds to help sort of create this. And the, the game uses a correct me if i'm wrong uh a d4 system mm -hmm. uh, very yep. simple in a good way not simple in a, in a bad way dice pool and dice uh resolution system uh to help mm -hmm. keep that con almost conversation between the group and, and the narrator to, to going to to help mm -hmm. build out these these memories and these characters it's it's beautifully written uh fantastic <laughs> artwork as well which uh you're also credited for um so said a little bit about it. let's let's focus a little bit back onto you where can we find nibiru where can we find you where can we find arakana media please uh well arakana basically has a website arakana.com uh and then arakana and the number one uh in twitter uh, which i tend to uh, update most often uh so yeah uh that's where you can get nibiru and, and see what's coming from me Mm -hmm. All right. I will make sure there are uh, <laughs> links to those down in the description below. The Quick Start Guide is available through your website mm -hmm. and through a drive through RPG. Um, so click on those. One thing that you have uh, been posting on your Twitter recently, uh, a time of recording, uh, is the upcoming Kickstarter, uh, which mm -hmm. uh, looks fantastic. Would you mind telling us a little bit more about that, please? Yes, uh, of course. That is uh, my next game, which is uh, Zephyr, uh, which is an anarchist fantasy game of fleeting identities. Um, yeah, it's it's basically it's a fantasy game, um, and it, it's funny because it, it's it's sort of like 
based around this this idea it's a bit high concept um so the idea is that um it's a game about feelings in which uh feelings in this world have uh they're basically material they behave like substance so you can see you know rivers of like fury and mountains made of sorrow etc and in particular the zephyr are four uh, specific feelings that belong to this creature uh, that is called the foy and the foy is this like massive sort of like sentient continent in which the adventures happen so it's it's basically like on the back of a creature that mm. is shaped like a uh, continent and mountains etc um so the interesting thing is that these uh these feelings of, of a foy uh, which come in four colors cyan magenta yellow and black are represented in the game with tokens uh they're actual tokens there are no dice in the game uh you mm. basically use those tokens and those tokens because your characters too are made out of feelings are part of your constitution so instead of like tracking hp etc you have just like a pile of tokens that represents what you're made of uh mm. in the game um uh and of course like there's a task resolution system that is tied to the tokens etc but your characters uh the windfolk they basically go out into the, wor the world uh to fulfill uh, obligations, uh, sacred obligations to your community. And it has that vibe of Nibiru of discovering what your characters are, but instead of taking memories, they uh, take to bonds, bonds with the world, discovering what they feel strongly about. Mm -hmm. um, and so to basically determine that, instead of like spending memory points, you grab the tokens that are part of your constitution in different color combinations to create different bonds. For example, one part cyan or, or one part yellow and two parts magenta means fury. So if you spend that, you gain like awareness that, you know, there, there's this particular thing. I don't know, like, for example, like your brother-in-law or uh, like mm -hmm. a, a village that is like burning a part of the, of the forest that you're very furious about. And so you write that. And so you advance your character uh, through that. Uh, but at the same time, because it's part of your constitution, you have to mind when is it that you're spending that because it's it's your HP. So there's a lot of like survival uh, gameplay okay. uh, tied mm. to the development of the character as well. No, oh, it's amazing. I love that that shift uh, to the to a new mechanic. Uh, I love dice. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna stress that now. I have many dice. I do love dice. Don't think I'm abandoning dice here entirely. But this this token system so so different. It, it feels, uh, and I know other systems have uh, sort of passing tokens or trading tokens with others but the way this this uh system sort of uses the tokens and and associated colors i think is magical i think <laughs> is the only fair f fair word i can use for it it's mm. it's inspired I, I i love it to be honest i love it <laughs> and uh it's not just uh the land of a foy there are also enemies antagonists mm -hmm. antagonists yes. to our arc our, our yeah, Finished. totally. Uh, yeah. There's basically uh, at the center of, of, of a foy, at, at sort of like the valley that's at the center, uh, there are the antagonists, which are the salt states, uh, which are essentially like a huge uh, statal society based on debt. Uh, and they essentially just go out in incursions. And, you know, they're, they're dangerous. It's, it's like you want to avoid them. <laughs> um, it's... Um, it's also one of those things where, like, of course, the the setting is conveying ideas, etc. And and there's one thing which I think, because the premise is kind of you know wacky, uh, mm -hmm. I don't think it'd be the same to say, okay, this whole premise of like feelings that become matter, etc. And then I give you a d20 and like a class system or something like mm -hmm. that. It's just it really needs the system to be able to, you know, stay present and in the minds mm -hmm. of players, I think. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's about what really conveys the best, the, the ideas in that case. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, it, it is a time of recording. It is waiting to be launched on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. um, so when, uh, when is that Kickstarter running from until? That is going to run until the 20th of February. All right. Uh, link will be in the description below. So please, if uh, you're listening to this while the Kickstarter is ongoing, please scroll down, follow that link, and support uh, the Kickstarter for Zephyr. Um, 
so with Nibiru complete, Zephyr very close to to sort of kickstarting at time of recording. Um, please back it as I've just said because it looks fantastic. What else is next for for you in particular and um, mm-hmm. or Kana <laughs> Media uh, in the future? Um, well, I'm mainly just working on 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 Zephyr now. Uh, after that. I have no idea. I would like to do something that ties into the salt states um, part of the setting. Um, so that's a thing that could happen. But I'm like just so embroiled in Zephyr because I'm I'm doing everything. Um, you know, I I do all of the illustrations for this book. I do all of the wow. illustrations, all the writing, all the the game design is yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's it's quite work intensive. <laughs> Yeah, no, it may, it looks um the the post you put on Twitter the the stuff that is up on the Kickstarter page it looks amazing. So <laughs> that it's incredible the amount of work you put into it so far and, and uh, moving forward. Um, what was one of your inspirations for Zephyr? Uh, for Zephyr, please. Uh, for Zephyr, it's a good question. I well, I don't have, for example clear inspirations for it, like Nibiru. For Zephyr, it's very clear. It's essentially uh, a lot of readings on um, anarchist anthropology. With anarchist anthropology, I refer to anarchists studying societies outside of state and uh, the ways in which democracy happens in those societies. So outside of parasitilia, uh, parliamentarism, uh, and and so like electoral systems and stuff like that. Um so it's tied to that, particularly to David Graeber's work, um, Dept, uh, uh, The First 5,000 Years, uh, James Scott's work, uh, for example, Seeing Like a State, uh, Against the Grain. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's generally about the dynamics of, like, those stateless societies, their so- social institutions, and also the interaction with the states, because this sort of like interaction is, is there in the game. The idea that mm. there's windfall communities that live at the periphery in like very rugged uh, sort of like landscapes, because that's an interesting thing of a foy being it that it's living. It's a thing that is constantly like moving and there's earthquakes and it's, it's super rugged outside of that like central uh, valley. Uh, mm. So they're protected by all of that terrain and stuff. Uh, but the salt states, you know, they have their uh, foothold in the middle and the interactions are tied to that and, and through the world building and, and, of course, the mechanics that convey that, uh, mm-hmm. they're very particular uh, to those uh, reads. That there's, I've done a lot of research uh, yeah. for, the, for the game, but it's mostly social sciences uh, and anthropology. Mm-hmm. Wow, well, that's very deep very deep uh so uh, no it's not it's amazing to to draw on on such uh, important resources and then share that in such a way that is engaging for for people like myself who potentially wouldn't necessarily go and pick up and read these things but can absorb that information through play even by proxy which is you know mm-hmm. every day is a learning day as it were <laughs> um so with all that in mind with with as you say you, you're doing all the work uh, for Zephyr and you've done a lot of work you know all, well all the work for Nibiru um, do you get any time do, do you get any downtime or is all of your time work slash tabletop role playing game development yeah yeah I, I I don't work much I work between three to four hours a day so the rest is free for me um that is like for me it's like super important not to work more than four maybe five hours a day and 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 that's it now i'm basically working all of the day because i'm with the kickstarter and and Mm. i'm about to move cities and and stuff like that uh i'm moving to tokyo uh but uh but generally most of the like the last two years it's been about three hours more or less uh, of working every day, three to four hours. Nice. So, yeah. Nice. Uh, so with your free time, are you, do you get to play other tabletop role-playing games? Are you in any sort of groups or, or uh, campaigns or anything where you yep. currently are? Uh, would you mind telling us a, a little bit? Yeah, about 
Totally. Um, I will have a. Um, I basically meet up with like uh, a couple of friends that live nearby to play Test Zephyr uh, mm -hmm. here. Um, and uh, this summer, I went back to Argentina to see friends, and I got together my high school friends, and we basically started a game of uh, Exalted, and oh, we've been cool. playing that since I left. Uh, it's super fun, like every Friday. Uh, so yeah. And uh, I've been playing sort of like a, a, a bureaucrat in Exalted because apparently there's like a like a build path in Exalted where you have like a bureaucracy uh, build. So it's really like, uh, you know, a very legalistic character that's <laughs> always trying to bring up like paperwork and that form or this form to sort of like, yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it's good that uh, you're able to sort of play consistently and work on your projects and uh sort of i'm sure move within moving house will be a probably stressful as it is for anybody else moving house but uh, <laughs> it sounds like it sounds like you're all over it so that that's really good mm -hmm. um so it, we, you know we've touched on nibiru is there any more content coming for nibiru or have you sort of finished the the releases for that um so i launched um, um a an expansion supplement uh sanadu uh last year um and uh, for now i'm just completely focused on on zephyr if i ever launch something for nibiru again uh it will be with a new system um okay. i think that like you know it's it's, it's like depending on the system but there's a certain degree of stuff that you can add on to before it loads and basically mm. sort of like i don't know like washes out the the core uh of the system uh, i think and and because never is very lean it's very easy uh to to make it bloated so mm. um i would like to also get the chance to design something new because i like that's one of the most rewarding things of the whole experience for me designing uh systems and mechanics so i would like to uh, do something with a different uh, system for Nibiru in the future. If I if I go back to that world, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, well, we wait to see. Maybe uh, if a new system comes to mind, a new game will come to mind once Zephyr is out and mm -hmm. in the wild, as it were. Yeah, we'll go with that. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, we, we've we've covered Nibiru and uh, Zephyr. What about for you as a a you as a company uh where do you hope <laughs> where do you hope to take uh oracana media in the future uh in the future hopefully to tokyo <laughs> um but like I, I i don't really have like any sort of ambition uh company wise or or in terms of like uh, in in fact like I've been doing more or less uh, okay uh, with money. So it's, it's one of those things that uh, as long as admin doesn't turn, because like, for example, I spent like 30 minutes on admin every day mm -hmm. or maybe 20 minutes. Um, sometimes I don't do admin, but if I can keep it like that, that to me is the most important. I don't, I really don't want to make it so that it becomes so big that I have to spend one hour every day. Uh, sending orders of, st um, of stuff like I have a food and and food uh, mm. uh, sorry uh, I have a house and food and and stuff yeah. uh, I can pay rent so yeah mm. uh, the most important thing for me is, is time and being able to use the the time at work for like designing and illustrating and stuff so, yeah. oh, I, I, one quirky question I, I guess the the logo for uh, the company is sort of a a diamond with is is it is it a face it looks like a face yeah i was looking yeah it's a windfall ah okay okay so did you come up with that how long is because a long that, time ago i was thinking that that's been there a long time and this game is quite new and the terms cross okay uh does mm -hmm. it have a name or is it just just the logo in your no it's just the logo it's it's, it's basically a wind folk uh but yeah it, it was there since the time uh Nibiru got published which means that at least the the idea of the characters and more or less how they look was there from since like 2019 or something wow. so yeah 
That's awesome. That's amazing. <laughs> uh, so with all uh, with the games you're putting out, and you know you're you're playing in one and and have experience with with many others, um, with the TTRPG community in in a, a certain amount of turmoil at, at this point in time with respect to certain attitudes, should we say, or approaches to to game release. Do you feel that the the TTRPG community is is becoming more inclusive there's there's a lot more voices that seem to be joining together a lot seem to be focused at one particular direction at the moment but do you feel that um the ttrpg community in in of itself is becoming more inclusive are there more people coming into the the hobby at this point in time do you feel it's a complex question um Mm. yes i think i think for sheer like gravity like it, it becomes more more inclusive i think the problem is where's the inclusion sort of like guided to um because there's one thing which is to have you know i don't know people from the global south writing content for i don't know like an american line manager for dnd than actual people from the global south writing their own things and being able to put those things into like a convention in the US or a convention in Europe or or whatever. I think that's that's a thing. Um, the most important factors uh, that make for an inclusive community for me is access to the production line. So access to printers, access to distribution, access to, um, uh, for example, the ability to even be paid for your games because mm. in Argentina, like, we can't really take out dollars from the bank. Uh, okay. There's really sort of like really bad sort of like apparatus of like, you know, confiscation and stuff like that, that, that sort of like cut off your chances to, um, to get paid uh, from yeah. outside the country. So it's really not about how many people we can put in this, you know, D and D project or whatever, uh, but, you know, giving the tools for people to be able to do their things, uh, because if not, like that, that's the other thing, like, um, a lot of us, like w- we've had problems with like D and and, and not even because of, of, of its market monopoly, but it's cultural monopoly. Mm-hmm. It's a game about, you know, uh, killing racially coded, uh, species, uh, mm-hmm. and, and stuff like that. Um, and, uh, you know, to it, to be able to allow other narratives in, you want to be able to give people access to the production line. And there's some people that have been acting as a, like mediators in that regard. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's really hard because it, it ties a lot with like international politics and, uh, you know, incl- enclosure of the global South and stuff. Um, so yeah, I think it's, it's something that has to be tied to a change in material conditions. Yeah, no, it's got a great answer. Thank you, uh, for sort of providing insight from, from sort of your, you, it is your unique perspective, but it is a perspective shared by many others around the world that are, as you say, unable to get sort mm-hmm. of a foot on the ladder or, uh, have, you know, just foot in the door as much as anything else so mm-hmm. uh, no i appreciate your insight and and such a an important lesson i guess to take away from this especially for myself who has um sort of fallen into the 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 dnd hole and climbed back out again to see what else is out there in the world um yeah there's, there's nothing bad about like playing dnd it's just a it, it's, it's a it comes from a different culture and mm. different worldview um, and also like, for example, I have access to that production line, but the price I pay is that I don't see my family for years or stuff like that. Uh, so there's always like degrees of precarity that we have to take in to be able to, to partake. So yeah, that's basically the thing. Mm-hmm. Well, that's quite a somber note. Uh, <laughs> so... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that's all right. That's no, that's, that's the truth of the situation. And, and I can mm-hmm. only respect, I can only sort of yeah respect that and and sort of take that forward and, and try to carry that with me a little bit as a 
a reminder of so many things. Uh, so we have spoken about Nibiru. We've spoken about Zephyr Kickstarter coming soon. Please scroll down and support that link. The link will be mm-hmm. in the description below this podcast. Uh, we've discussed uh, your gaming activities, Exalted, and um, kind of touched on the, the state of the TTRPG world, not just the mm-hmm. community, but the, the world at large. Um, is there anything we haven't discussed uh, that you want to bring up at this point? Um... No, I'm not sure. That's that's a that's a good summary. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, so, uh, would you like to remind us where we can find you on social media, find you on the, mm-hmm. on the web, uh, and where we can support you, please, Federica? Uh, yeah, uh, it's arikana.com uh, for my games. Uh, if you want to purchase Nibiru and stuff, and we have our mailing list there, and uh, also arikana number one um, in Twitter. Uh, to get like the updates and stuff, and we'll find the everything that's that I've written more or less uh, in public about Zephyr is there, uh, as well as links and stuff. So yeah, thanks. <laughs> that's all right. Uh, so there'll be a link to your Twitter, uh, the website. Uh, you have a Discord server. Yeah, Arcana has a Discord server, so you can hop in, and I'm I'm pretty much always there if you want to like interact with others, get together for a game you know, ask questions, that's more than welcome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so community is always fantastic and, and Discord's so such a great platform for mm-hmm. um, cultivating sounds wrong. Growing, <laughs> that's still the same thing. Uh, having It's one of those yes, good. A community, it's, Discord's great. Uh, <laughs> uh, you also want Instagram and Facebook as well, so I'll make sure there are links down uh, in the description below so people can come and find you, come and support you. Uh, as we said before, there'll be a link to the Kickstarter uh, if you're listening to this after the Kickstarter, I'm hoping there's a way to, <laughs> to backfill or just go and buy the Yeah, backer uh, kit or something like that. Uh, there should yeah. be. Mm-hmm. Uh, or, or just just go and uh, follow the links. Find a uh, find Zephyr on the website or drive through or wherever it may be posted and pick it up because it the artwork alone is is worth any value of money for purchase. It, <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, Federica, I'd love to get you back uh, once uh, Zephyr's Zephyr's Kickstarter campaign is complete. Uh, mm-hmm. Talk through it, maybe uh, sort of talk through a game or run a game or, or something like. That. It'd be great to get you back on the show for for that mm-hmm. or future projects. I mean, if you'd be willing to join me, of course. Yeah, of course. it have been really fun. <laughs> Amazing, and it's been such a pleasure getting to chat with you. I'm really looking forward to speaking to you again <laughs> in the future. Nice. Yeah. Same. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to learn more about the show, then go to www.snydersreturn.squarespace.com. Alternatively, you can find us over on Twitter, at Return Snyder. We have a link tree link in the description of this episode. And if you want to support us, come and join us over on Patreon, and we also have a Discord server. Uh, Please leave us a review, because we'd love to learn how to improve the channel and provide better content out for, for those who are listening. Uh, until we uh, until we speak again thank you